Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a moment of silence for the passing of the great Rod Marr who passed away this weekend? Rod Marr was a great man, a wonderful man, a good photographer, but Rod Marr was allergic to peanuts. <laughs> well, earlier this week, Rod Marr got a hooker who turned out to be a dude. Rod went back to his hotel room and ended up choking on that dude's nuts and dying on Friday. And <laughs> so, yeah, just a quick moment to say, God, please catch Rod Marr's spirit as it floats into space. Are you guys ready for a great comedy show? Because when you laugh, it gets infectious. And when you're infectious, you're Rod Marr. Hey everybody, it's Craig. Have you ever been to a comedy show in a room that you thought was falling apart? You ever seen a performer with a microphone that was being held together with tape? You ever seen a comedy show that was done with one speaker where they're not even doing the show in stereo, they're actually doing the show in mono? I'll bet you've never been to a comedy show that had a wall of fame that consisted of a picture of one creepy guy. Well, that's where I decided to make my album. I hope you enjoy it. Are you guys ready? All right. This gentleman has been featured on the King of Queens. Family Guy. American Dad. Sex in the City. Man, it got moist in here. Woo! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stomp your feet, clap your hands, shout and holler, and welcome to the stage, my friend, Mr. Craig Gass. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes, shit, fuck. We made it! Welcome to Where the Fuck Are We? You'd think that Count would have asked the most obvious question, because it's, it's on the top of all of our minds. We're all thinking the same thing, right? Because I'm thinking the same thing. I can see it on your face. And I'm going to ask the question. And that question obviously, is do we really need a fucking microphone for this? There's 15 people in this room. <laughs> the fuck am I amplifying my voice for? Isn't this as effective as this? I'm right in front of you. When I stand on this shitty stage, you have to look right into my balls. I'm up here. I've had more people involved in fucking drug deals than are in this room right now. There's more people in earth, wind, and fire than are in this fucking... And who the fuck is that? But this is perfect! Because I haven't done a show in the Seattle area in over five years. And I wanted my first time back to be yeah. just like this. <laughs> That's right. Kind of shitty. That's what I asked for. Kind of shitty. Yeah. Just a hint of shitty. Could you do that for me? This is what happened. Here's what happened. I called my agent a few months ago. Let's pretend like I have an agent. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was mad because he hadn't booked me in Seattle in five years. I called him up. I was actually yelling at him. I picked the phone. I said, hey! What the fuck? <laughs> and my agent, who's always trying to pacify me, was like, what's wrong, baby? <laughs> <laughs> my agent calls me baby. I call him bitch. Listen, bitch! 
Why don't you pick the phone and get me booked in Seattle, man? I keep telling you to book me, and you won't do it. I told you, that's where my life began, was in Seattle, and you haven't booked me in five years. And my agent was like, baby, baby, baby. <laughs> that's all you had to say? I'll book you at the Paramount Theater next week. And I was like, the P you know what? Fuck the Paramount Theater! <laughs> <laughs> my agent was shocked. <laughs> Fuck the Paramount. That's right! <laughs> Fuck them! And I just said, why fuck the Paramount? Because the Paramount's it's too big, it's loud. <laughs> Can't hear myself think when people are cheering. <laughs> Plus, you ever try to find parking around the Paramount? It's a pain in the ass, fuck you. <laughs> and my agent suggested, how about I book you someplace nicer than the Paramount? And I suggested, how about someplace shittier? <laughs> what? Shittier! Like a nightclub? Shittier. <laughs> like a comedy club? Shittier. <laughs> like Giggles Comedy Club? Hey! Not that shitty. Take it easy. Here's what I want. I want you to book me outside of town. How far outside of town? Way the fuck outside of town. <laughs> Book me in Milton, Washington. <laughs> and he asked me the smartest question he's ever asked me in my entire career. He said, the fuck is Milton, Washington? <laughs> Google it. <laughs> he looked it up and he said, I love it. Craig, we're going to do it. There's some great areas. We can get you near the intersection of I-5 and 142. And I said, fuck that. How about the intersection of sad and depressed? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's where I want to be. Right in the middle. Why are you yelling? I'm yelling because this is my dream gig, you fucking piece of shit. Okay, man, stop yelling. Stop me. Grab a pen. I'll stop yelling. Write this down. Okay, man. Okay, I'm writing this down. Okay. This is going to be my dream show. I'm going to film it. The crowd, the crowd, what about it, Craig? The energy, what about it? None, I want them staring at me like, <laughs> like, motherfucker, we are one of the 20 people who paid for this shit, why are you yelling? And lights, lighting, what do you want, Craig? Two, uh, <laughs> what? Two! But can you make them? bright as shit? Can you make it impossible to make any kind of fucking eye contact with people? Actually, can you just can you just take my grandfather's Buick and point it right in my fucking face so I can't see shit on either side of the stage, please, and make it uncomfortable? Okay, Craig, I'm making some notes. All right! Get me in a restaurant someplace down there that just like, you know what? Book me at Dave's. That's the place. That's where everybody goes. <laughs> that weird. Dave's! Greg, I like it. We'll get in there. We'll get some big stage and some bright lights. No, keep it dark and rapey. <laughs> what? Rapey! What are you talking about? Trust me, there's a... It's, you walk in there, there's, there's, there's rooms in the corner where... Everyone from the massage parlor gets raped at the end of the night. Trust me, I, I know this. It's dark, it's rapey, it's, just, it's already set up. But Craig, the stage area doesn't have much over there. We'll do some decorating. Grab my grandma's shitty curtains and just throw them up anywhere. I don't... <laughs> what do you mean? Anywhere, just... I get the weirdest shit anyone's ever seen. I want people asking questions. But Craig, you know, the paneling's getting old. There's actually a couple bullet holes in the wall. Well then fucking throw up a stupid picture to cover it up of the, of the town creep. The what? The creepy town guy. Just someone there won't be like, who the fuck is on that wall? What shit town is he the mayor of? 
Trust me, it'll work. Okay, man, stop yelling. I'm doing it, okay? We'll make it happen. All right, Greg, I'll make some phone calls. We'll get you in Dave's. In the corner where it's rapey. In the rapey, okay? All right, all right, I'll make some phone calls. And we'll get you in there. Prime time, Saturday night. Fuck prime time, how about early Sunday? <laughs> what? Early Sunday! Craig, nobody will come out. Exactly! People will wonder what the fuck happened to karaoke. <laughs> and bingo, fuck them. I don't give a shit. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Put it together. Okay, I'll make some calls, all right? Hey, one more thing. What? Fuck air conditioning. <laughs> what? Fuck air conditioning. What does that mean? You'll know. Everybody will know, and everybody will suffer. They have to suffer from my show. I don't give a fuck about people. Why would you say that? Cause this is my dream gig. Just do it, bitch. Bam, slam the phone down. That was months ago. Tonight, the dream is a reality. I'm driving down. <laughs> I'm in my car, driving down the road. Found the location. They said, go between the Safeway and the Albertsons, okay? <laughs> Coming down the road. I had so many requests, I was mumbling to myself. I was driving down here going, that place better be rapey as shit. <laughs> and it better be hot. It better be uncomfortable in that room. I hope it's stifling. God damn it, I hope it's stifling. Ooh, I hope they found a picture of somebody weird enough to put on the wall. <laughs> yeah, I hope there's no big crowds. I hope there's no big crowds. Like it's small and shitty. And then I pulled up. My first sign of success. <laughs> Plenty of parking. All right, cool. <laughs> Maybe I'll park in front of the massage park. All right. And I walked in, walked through the front door. Everybody's favorite person met me out there. Mary. Mary met me at the door. Hey, Mary. I said, hey, Mary. Mary said, Greg, come here. What's going on? And she goes, you're sold out. And I was like, <laughs> Look back over at Mary. <laughs> Walk through the room. My friend Count is on stage. Count is one of the funniest comedians I've ever seen. But not all of you are laughing right now. Some of you still aren't even smiling. <laughs> it's almost like you're all thinking the same. <laughs> is this where they're doing the comedy show? Yes. The fuck is this place? Are we gonna get raped? <laughs> I looked around the room. Sold out. 20 strong. <laughs> Not even all of you would sit in the same spot. <laughs> Group people over here. A few dudes over there. A couple people over there. Some guy in the bathroom's jerking off. <laughs> I took in all the awkwardness. People staring, uncomfortable, hot, stinky. And I thought, this is perfect. <laughs> It's a dream come true. I got so emotional. I did it. I had to go outside. I just, I had to call my mom. I said, Mom, I made it. 
And then <laughs> mom was like, baby, are you okay? My mom calls me baby, too. <laughs> She's my first agent. <laughs> are you okay? I go, yeah. I'm doing okay, mom. I'm headlining tonight. I'm performing a show in Seattle, well, just outside of Seattle. <laughs> Baby, are you at the Paramount Theater? Uh, no. <laughs> are you someplace nicer? Yeah. <laughs> someplace shittier, Mom. You're not at Giggles, are you? No, not that shitty. <laughs> My mom asked the smartest question she's ever asked in my entire adult life. She said, the fuck is Dave's of Milton? I, was like, I don't know, but they have a website. <laughs> she came back, baby, I'm looking at the website right now. Yeah, mom, crazy, right? Are you sure they're open? Um. <laughs> I'm not, you know what? This might actually be an employee meeting. I'm not sure if I'm going to right now. There's like 15 fucking people here. Come on. Let's go. But guess what? This isn't even a comedy show. This is like fucking whack a mole. <laughs> All right, one last time, guys. Quiet and action. Fuck this place. The goddamn shithole. <laughs> Holy fuck. Where the fuck am I? Fucking Milton? You got it. Where the fuck is Dave? So. Fuck Dave. This, this is, is Aaron. This is the guy who I hired to film I've this gig. Aaron. Fuck it. There's fucking carpet on the stage. Um, can you fucking explain duct tape? what we're doing right now? There's a fucking curtain. Yeah, oh, we're, we're in pre-production right now. We're just doing, blocking, doing a dress rehearsal God so they can get on the stage. Fucking nails on the wall. And can you explain why we're place. using a four-foot-tall Asian hole. guy as my body Fuck. double? Fuck this place. It's a goddamn shithole. Kick the chair. Who the fuck is this rapist? <laughs> is that a good one? That's great. Let me get this straight. You sign the deal. Yes. You can distribute it anywhere in the world. Yes. You can do it anywhere you want. I can film it anywhere I want. Film it anywhere you want. Yes. Why dance? Because this is... <laughs> because all of our friends that, that do uh, comedy shows, or like comedy specials, they always, they always end up filming in really nice theaters with a really nice production. They try to look as good as possible. I wanted to do a show where comedians tend to hide their shows. And these are the places where we learn how to do stand-up comedy. That's why I wanted to do it, because this is where you do stand-up, to learn how to become a stand-up comedian, is in places like this. This is where comedy is born, right here. Comedy's not born on a theater stage in front of 3,000 people. No! Comedy's born in shitholes like this! In front of crowds like you that don't give a fuck! Half of you aren't even here for stand-up comedy. Half of you here because you got jerked off at the massage parlor and you just made it over here for some onion rings. All comedians and all musicians say you have to find your voice, and once you find your voice, you take off. I've been doing comedy for a long time, watching comedians long before they became famous, trying to find their voice. I'd see guys like Adam Sandler, who used to be one of the most misogynistic comedians I've ever seen. He was filthy, and it didn't fit him. He'd go up on stage, do his dirty stuff. After the shows, comedians would be out in the alley looking for him. They'd go, hey, hey man, yeah, you, 
Hey, how come you doing that dirty shit on stage? I know, but that doesn't fit you, man. You're like a sweet looking Jewish kid. Nobody wants to hear that shit from you. You know what? You should come back next week with a guitar, play some cute song or something. Well, that would be funny coming from you. But he kept trying to do what he thought was funny. He'd get out on stage and they go, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your next comedian, Mr. Adam Sandler. Adam, come out and do his dirty jokes. All right, all right. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, much appreciation. Uh, my name's Adam, and uh, are you guys like me? Do you like to lick your girlfriend's asshole? I know I do. Shibby do. Hee hoo! <laughs> Why'd you say that? <laughs> that was wildly inappropriate. I remember watching Christopher Walken doing stand-up comedy. Stop laughing, this is true, shut up. <laughs> and Christopher Walken's problem is after the shows, comedians would be waiting from out in the alley and they go, hey, yeah, hey man, you know you're creeping everybody the fuck out. <laughs> no, you are not funny at all, you are scary. You made half the crowd leave. And there's only 20 people in the room. That's fucked up. No, man, you know what? Don't come back to comedy no more, man. You scary. You, you know what? You should be an actor. Yeah, you got a dramatic face. That was Lippy Leroy who said that. That's why I was doing that. And Christopher Walken was filthy. If you thought Andrew Dice Clay was dirty, you should have heard Christopher Walken doing stand-up. Chris would come out. Yes. Hi. My name is Chris. And these are my jokes. Are you like me? Do you hate cunts? I've dated four or five cunts in my life. The last cunt, I hit it so much, I hit her in the face with a cowbell. Pow! <laughs> you are promoting domestic violence. You can't say that shit. I remember watching Tracy Morgan doing stand-up comedy. Back when Tracy Morgan's entire act is, he would get on stage and try to start a race war in the club. It was uncomfortable. Tracy would just stare at all the white people in the crowd and just be like. I'm gonna kill every white motherfucker in this place. I'm serious. All you white people look the same to me. That's crazy. That's crazy. And I wanna put a baby in your butthole. What do you. You can't talk to women like that. I don't care. <laughs> Give me a shoehorn and some butter spray. I'm down with the brown. That's crazy. That's crazy. That actually wasn't in the old days. That was last Friday at Caroline's. But still, I was scared. Are you kidding me? I've been doing stand-up comedy for so long. I remember watching people like Morgan Freeman who used to do stand-up comedy. <clears throat> Shut up, this is my story. Shut the fuck up. This is back when he was on the electric company. That motherfucker. <laughs> the reason why comedians hated Morgan Freeman is because Morgan Freeman would come into the comedy club. He's supposed to do a 10-minute guest set. He'd come on stage and do a 90-minute story and have one joke at the end of his 90-minute story. It just slowed everything the fuck down. Comedy's about timing. It's about pacing. Even the way he walked on stage was too slow. They bring him out on stage and go, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your next comedian. You've seen him on the electric company. Please welcome Mr. Morgan Freeman. Morgan would take a sweet ass time. Hi. Well, I want to tell you a story. About a boy. <laughs> <laughs> named Johnny it seems Johnny walked up to his daddy one day and said daddy what's this between my legs 
Well, Johnny's daddy answered him. And he thought about it. He thought about it for a long time. 22 years later. Johnny was in Shawshank for a crime he didn't commit. Motherfucker, make a point. Are you serious? I have a two drink minimum and I'm on a cocaine buzz. You better pick this show up, man. This is bullshit. What the fuck am I paying for? Right, Todd? I'll be honest with you. I wanted to be here at Dave's because I was inspired to be here many years ago. I used to come here to watch stand-up comedy. Right here, Dave's. You know how long ago? First time? I walked in this room 38 years ago. <laughs> I was sperm. But I used to hang on the back wall, and I'll never forget. <laughs> and I'll never forget, the first comedian I ever saw on this stage inspired me. And it was a man who never made it in stand-up comedy. <laughs> because he sucked. But he became a great dramatic actor. And that man's name was Al Pacino. I know I just pointed at the town weirdo when I did that, but I don't know why. But his name was Al Pacino. And the reason, I've never had so much fun with 20 people in my life, this is awesome. <laughs> this crowd is small enough that if we wanted to, we could all get Mary's van and just get the fuck out of here. We could actually pack the crowd into Mary's van. Be like, hey Mary, can we go bowling? Is that cool? Is it cool if we bring the crowd? Yeah. Hey, we can bring the crowd. Everybody, we're going to Mary. Bring the crowd. <laughs> Al Pacino, the reason why comedians hated Al Pacino is because Al Pacino is what comedians would refer to as a hack. He would do old jokes. Shit you'd heard a million times. I didn't know that. I was sperm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was smooth. I didn't know that Al Pacino was doing old children's jokes. I thought he was cool. He'd be on stage and just doing his thing. I thought he looked smooth. Yeah, boy. Um, uh, can I ask you a question? Let me ask you a question. What kind of a bee uh, makes milk? What kind of a bee makes milk, my friend? A booby. Hoo Why, 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 why? Why did Tigger smell so bad? Why did Tigger smell so bad, my friend? Because he's always playing with poo. Hoo It's corny. <laughs> but I learned my lesson. You never know. You never know. You have to keep supporting stand-up comedy because you never know when that moment's going to hit you. <laughs> or when your lips are going to get dry. <laughs> you never know. So why are we not successful? Who, me and you? Yes, me and you. <laughs> Shit. Well, uh, we know successful people. Yes. We know famous people. Yes. Comedians. Musicians. Yeah. This is the best gig anybody could ever do because anybody could shine when there's like 80,000 people. But, you know, the... Craig Ash. Hey, what's, ha what's happening? How are you, what's man? Going on? Holy shit, I'm, I'm on camera you. right now. How are you? I'm Craig. Hey, I'm Dan. I'm, uh, Brendan. Do you mind being on camera? Mike McCready, everybody. Mike McCready. No. What's your name? Dan? Dan. Dan, this is Count. Dan. Count. Dan. Dan. Mike. Mike McCready. Friend. Musician yeah. friend of mine. He's a local guy who, uh, that's, uh, that's Sung. Sung's my, uh, he's 
my body double, but um, it's a long story. But uh, I'm glad you guys made it. So where were you guys at? You guys, you guys, were you guys together? I went over to Europe with Mike. Yeah, yeah just got off the plane. It was Europe. amazing, man. Yeah. London, eighty thousand screaming fans. It was really amazing. Wow. Yeah. Nice. But I'm here for you, my friend. Good. I'm glad you made it. So where are you playing tonight? Where am I playing? I'm this. <laughs> <laughs> This is it? You made it. This is my gig. Seriously, where are you playing tonight? Um, this, this is my gig. This is, I'm actually doing the show right here. This is it. I wanted to film in here because I remember I told you the whole concept was I was going to film it in a small bar. This is it? <laughs> Every band is like um, loaded with comedians, and all all uh, musicians wish they could be comedians, and then of course all comedians wish they could be rock stars. You know. And that's why we always get along with musicians. Like, comedians and musicians always get along. Yeah. Then what about Gene Simmons? Well, that's a different story. I don't know if Gene... I don't know. I get the feeling Gene likes me, but I could be wrong. I'm going to give you some information. And this information is going to help me. <laughs> because... If I die, or if I disappear soon, I know who's going to kill me. And I'm going to give you the information so that all 20 of you will be able to help my family. Because Gene Simmons from KISS is going to kill me. I am certain of it that Gene Simmons from KISS is going to kill me. And it started out as something silly. I auditioned for about a year to be Howard Stern's sidekick. And during that one year period, all I would do really is just sit in the background as celebrity voices and I would say awful shit as celebrities. <laughs> like everybody had like an angle, you know. Like if it was, uh, like say Christopher Walken would be like a guy who would say racist shit or you know, like something in the news would come up about race and I jump in. That's, that sounds great. <laughs> Howard, that reminds me of a great joke. Yeah, what's the joke, Chris? Well, what do you call a midget Puerto Rican? A speck, pow, that's a great joke. <laughs> and what's funny is that people at home would be like, man, Christopher Walker's fucking racist. <laughs> they get mad. <laughs> and I had this impression of Gene Simmons that was like, it wasn't really funny. It sounded like Gene, but we really couldn't make it funny. I was trying to think of a funny angle. And it was like, how great would it be if every time we have a music guest in the studio, I'll just constantly interrupt them as Gene Simmons and try to sell them shitty Kiss products. <laughs> and it worked. And it was funny. It doesn't matter who the musical guest was. The bigger the musical guest, the better to fuck with. It just whoever, like, it could have been Coldplay. It could have been Jay-Z. It would all come back to Kiss. It could, Paul, it could have been Paul McCartney. And in the middle of the interviews, I would just go, Paul, I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> By the way, this is Gene Simmons from Kiss. And if you go to kissonline.com right now, you will see how much the Beatles stole everything from KISS. <laughs> and Paul McCartney would look at me and go, who the fuck are you? And I go, I'll tell you who I am. How many members were in the Beatles? Four, right. How many members were in KISS? Four, thank you, go to kissonline.com. It didn't make any sense. <laughs> I was just an asshole. You guys put out Abbey Road, right? Yeah, I fucked a fat girl named Abby in the road. Fuck you. Go to kissonline.com. <laughs> but what's weird about it that we had no idea about at the time is Gene Simmons, the real Gene, started getting hate mail. <laughs> and people started yelling at him on the streets. Like he'd be in a mall in Beverly Hills, so I'd go, Why are you such a dick to Paul McCartney? <laughs> Who, me? What did I say to Paul McCartney? I don't, I never said anything that was mean. And then, or, or all the weird gay shit I would say on the air, people would, people would think was real and they'd go, why do you want to finger fuck Fabio? He's a nice man. And Gene would go, I never met Fabio. What are you talking about? I never, and someone finally told him, Gene, 
There's a guy in New York um, on the Howard Stern show. He's a comedian. His name's Craig Gass. He does an impression of you, and he's an asshole. <laughs> he's, he's an asshole, and, and people think it's you. I don't know why. And armed with the information, without telling us, Gene got on a plane, flew to New York, and confronted me live on the air. <laughs> Which I know a lot of you saw, it became an episode of E! Entertainment Television of his first uh, visit with me on the Howard Stern Show. This is how we find out about it. We're having fun on the air, laughing about something that was in the news that day. And Gary Delabate, the producer of the Howard Stern Show, walked in and he goes, Oh, hey guys, um, hold on. Hold on, you gotta stop, you gotta stop. This is, no, no, no. Um, okay, shit. Uh, okay, Gene Simmons just walked in the building and he wants to beat the fuck out of Craig right now. And I was like... Me? He's here? Wait, he, we're not gonna let him upstairs, are we? We're not gonna let him in the, on the floor, are we? Well, all the security guys are big kiss fans, let him in without a pass. And I was like, holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. What do we do? What do we do? And Howard's looking at me going, great, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be great. And I was like, great for who? Not great for me. It's great for you. This is not great for me. It's like, all right, all right. So, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go commercial right now. And when we come back, Gene Simmons, not Craig, acting like Gene Simmons, the real Gene Simmons is here. And when we get back from this commercial break, we're gonna have Gene talk to Craig about his impression. And we go to commercial, and Gary comes over with like the worst advice ever. Okay, listen, so listen, if he, if he tries to punch you in the face, he might get like two or three clean ones off your face, but, but why, not, why not he jump in? So just, just to make sure you just kind of defend your face. I was like, hit me in the face, what the fuck are you talking about? That's the worst advice I've ever heard. He's like, no, no, you're gonna be great, you're gonna be great. No, Ronnie will jump in. You might get a couple hits, but you know, who knows? We come back from commercial, go, all right, let's let him in. Please welcome Gene Simmons from KISS. And Gene comes walking in. And in the studio, there's five or six people in the studio. So he doesn't know which one of us is the asshole. And when he comes in. Yes. And everyone in the room went, right here. He's just, um, <laughs> he's gonna, I'll go over here. You, want, you can take my chair if you want. This is, that, that's who you want to talk to right there. And Gene came in. Right. First of all, you don't sound anything like me at all, okay? That's number one. And number two, I didn't come here to talk about people who think they're funny. I came here to talk about something very serious and something that's never been done before in rock and roll. If you go to kissonline.com, and I was like... Is he fucking serious? And he was. He tried to sell us a kiss casket. At one point, Howard said, this is a joke, right? You're joking, are you joking about the kiss casket? He goes, joking, what am I joking about? No, it's a real, it's $5,000. Beautiful kiss casket with a kiss logo on the side, and guess what? It doubles as an ice cooler. And I was like. <laughs> and I kept jumping in the middle of his interview going, you know what else has never been done before in rock and roll? <laughs> For one million dollars, I will throw Ace Freely, our guitar player, into the casket and you can spend eternity spooning with Kiss. And Gene kept cutting me off going, no, you be quiet, no, you be quiet, no, I'm serious, no, I'm serious, no, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And everyone at home was going, who the fuck is talking right now? Holy shit. So the interview ends, and Gene gets up to explain what happened at the end of that interview on the E! Entertainment television show. Gene gets up, he shakes Howard's hand, gives Robin a hug, and then I walked in behind them and I was like, hey, I'm Craig. I just, I wanted to say hi. And thanks for coming in. Thanks for having a good sense of humor. And he just stared at me and went, And he walked out of the room. And I stood there and I was like, did you see that? What the fuck was that? Is he mad at me? He's pissed. What the fuck's he mad about? Outside, this is why this happened. Our camera guy, Ganji, is waiting for him. And he goes, Gene, so what'd you think about the new guy, Craig Gass? And Gene's walking down the hall and he went, 
I, uh, and I ran up behind him, and that's why I pushed him out of the way and went, <clears throat> I'll tell you what I thought. <laughs> you want to know what I think of Craig Gass? I love him. He's amazing. I don't know what's on his facial hair. That's fucking weird, but I'll tell you what. So after the interview, the next day, Gary Delabate, the producer of the show, comes walking up to me and he goes, uh, he tells us the, the big breaking news. Hi, guys. You're not going to believe this. I just got off the phone with the kids' headquarters. Which <laughs> That sentence should have been, hey, guys, you're not going to believe this. There's a fucking kids' headquarters. <laughs> I know. It's fucking weird, right? And Gary tells us, um, I just got the phone with Gene Simmons at the KISS headquarters, and Gene wants to come back. And he has a request. And his request is, I'd like to come back in a month when Craig isn't there. Okay? <laughs> because I really do want to sell some KISS products that are new at KISSonline.com. <laughs> so please book me on a day when Craig's not around. To which I, I heard that, and I just like, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> like as a fan like knowing that he knows who I am like I'm a fan of his and like and then he oh that's fucking cool what if I came back anyway just, ooh, ooh wait 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 what if what if what if I showed up anyway and dressed up in full Gene Simmons makeup and Gene Simmons costume and I can walk in the middle of his interview and go, I'm the real Gene Simmons. And you're an imposter. Fuck you. Right? And Gary looked at me and went, holy shit, he's going to fucking kill you. I love it. Let's do it. We're going. Everybody write that down. We're going with Craig's idea. We're going with Craig's idea. He's gonna be fucking, you're not going to survive this, but this is awesome. So a month later, Gene Simmons comes back at 8.30 in the morning. What he doesn't know, I've been there since 5.30, hiding in a hallway with a professional makeup artist and a $3,000 kiss outfit with monster boots that lit up in the eyes. Gene showed up wearing a business suit. And Gene walks in and Howard goes, Gene, it's an honor to have you here. Gene Simmons from Kiss, everybody. Gene, it's an honor to have you here. You know, we're all big Kiss fans, right? We're all, right? And before we get started, do you mind if we bring in this guy do you know about this guy? There's a guy that says that you're not the real Gene, that, that you're an imposter, that he's the real Gene. And he went, wait, there's, wait, there's a who? There's a guy that says that he's the real Gene Simmons and you've been impersonating him. I don't know what his deal is. Just, we'll just bring him in for one second. Go ahead and uh, bring him in. Bring in the other Gene Simmons. And I threw the door open with my wingspan. I said, that's right. It's me. And Gene looked over and went, oh, you motherfucker. You, you son of a bitch. And I walked in the room and said, that's right. I'm the real Gene Simmons. And you're an imposter. And I can prove it. Because I got a bunch of cheap shit I want to sell you. <laughs> and I had a bag full of shit. Just shit that we had written KISS logos on. Uh, new kids on the block lunchbox I took out a marker and I just wrote kiss <laughs> and after the interview Robin gives him a hug and then Howard shakes his hand and then Gene sees me in the corner and goes come here no yep, come here Mr. Funny Man come here I want to talk to you and I I, <laughs> I, I can't walk in heels <laughs> no, I was like, hey You know what you just did took a lot of balls. <laughs> You're not going to hit me, are you? <laughs> I admire that. And he walked out of the room, and I was standing there on my heels like... And then he throws the door open. Ganji's waiting for him. Gene, what'd you think about what Craig did today? And he's walking down the hall, and then I was like, fuck it. I threw the door open behind him. <laughs> dressed up like Gene. I was just standing behind him going... And hiding down the hallway 
in our green room, our next guest wanted to see Gene. It was Jay, Silent Bob, and Afro Man. And Afro Man had a huge song at the time that was all about getting high. That's the whole song, was because they get high. That's the whole song. And Afro Man is high as fuck. And he's staring at me, dressed like Gene Simmons. And then he looks at the real Gene Simmons. And then he looks back at me, dressed like Gene Simmons, and goes, Yo, Gene, can I get a picture with you? And the real Gene went, you know, this guy, and I go, shut the fuck up, here we go. <laughs> Afro man was excited. He's like, yo, my mom's just gonna trip out. <laughs> oh, I know your mom. We should show clips of stuff that happened during the shows. And, uh... We gotta show the fight. The fight? The fight. Yeah, we'll show... If we can show the fight legally, we should definitely show the fight. And then show stuff that happened, like, oh, and, uh, like, stupid shit uh, that people yelled out during the shows. Like the, uh, what was that girl? <laughs> what did she say? Do you remember porking me? Do you remember porking me? Does anybody have any questions at all? Any questions at all? What? What was that? What? Cards? Cards? Anybody else have a question? What's the question? What? Probably. Was it in the bathroom here? No? Yeah? All right. Wow. <laughs> And you know, somebody asked me, like, are you going to keep that? <laughs> are you keeping that on the tape? And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm going to name the album, <laughs> Do You Remember Porking Me? Like, of course I'm going to keep that on there. Do you remember porking me? Like, who says that? Some girl that really wants to know if you remember porking her. Yeah. So do you. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck that was. <laughs> like, I really don't. Miami, Florida. True story. Miami, Florida. True story. Dade County Police are trying out a program right now where they're trying out baboons. Baboons to possibly replace drug-sniffing dogs. Why? Because... Baboons have a keener sense of smell and have the, the agility to climb buildings and fire escapes. Baboons. Baboons. So you're sitting in your fifth story apartment one night, minding your own business. Five stories above the ground with your boy that gets all your weed. <laughs> Hefe. And you are high as fuck.
monkey in your fucking window? There's a monkey in your fucking window? How do you say monkey in Spanish? Monkeyto. Monkeyto. No, look, look, see, I'm pointing at him. See him. He's pointing at me. Oh, shit. All of a sudden, from outside your fire escape, a fucking baboon grabs your dime bag. <laughs> You're sitting on your couch going, <coughs> <coughs> Was that your buddy from Oregon? <coughs> <coughs> he had a pink ass. <coughs> Who's gonna stop the baboons? You know cops who go bad after five, ten years. You got a baboon with a fucking badge? Roaming the streets? Fucking people up monkey style? Breaking into people's apartments? <coughs> grabbing your Twinkies? Shitting in the middle of your living room. You know how far people come from to go see shows at Dave's? Here's the thing. You can make fun of it. But the reality is... That room's got a lot of heart. A lot of heart. And comedians love performing there. Because the shows are can be magical. There's a... Uh, there's like this backbone of people that, that work at the place. And then sitting on top of that is Mary, who's just a saint. She always walks around the room, introduces herself to everybody, wants to make sure everybody's having a good time. And that adds to what makes the room unique, you know? I love performing there. I can't wait to go back there again. I always get excited about doing shows there because uh, because they get excited about doing shows. They, they genuinely get excited about someone coming to do a show in their neighborhood. So you get this feeling of appreciation. It's always like this a anticipation, like, What's gonna happen tonight? You have people that come to the show over and over again. You have regulars that are there every week. And when people take life so seriously, it's a gift to be able to go someplace where people let go. You know? I think more people need to just let go and just Calm the fuck down. Look at how happy we are. <laughs> See how happy we can be. Why are you stressed out? The fuck do you have to be so stressed out about? Life is what you make it. <laughs> if the news is making you depressed, you need to stop watching the fucking news. Because the news knows. The shadow knows. The news knows that if they put out good news, you won't give a fuck. If the news came on during a commercial break with Judge Judy and said, Hey, psst, hey man. Coming up tonight at 11 o'clock, we got a great story about some people in your neighborhood helping out some kids. Come back at 11. You would be like, I don't give a fuck. 
But when the news comes on during that commercial break and goes, Psst, hey, somebody's trying to fuck your kids. <laughs> trying to what? Somebody's trying to fuck your kids. <laughs> Whose kids? Your kids. <laughs> My kids? Yeah, someone's fucking your kids. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking about fucking your kids. Your kids are getting fucked all day. What? Where is this at? Come back at 11 o'clock. <laughs> Todd, you hit somebody's trying to fuck our kids. You hear about that? We gotta watch the news at 11 o'clock. What the fuck? It's all in your head. It's just your fears. And it's not even real. Black people versus white people. We're past that. Red state versus blue state. We all have way more in common than we do that divides us. Except that guy, who the fuck is that guy? I don't know who the fuck that is. You know, I had to be honest, I didn't know who he was. Travis brought me here. Yeah. I laughed so hard, he was the best. T-shirts, if you have gas, you love gas, you would love to have a crank gas t-shirt. And he is signing these bad boys. Penis is just starting to push it up against me. It's like, excuse me, pardon me. Amazing, it was hilarious, I loved it. <laughs> Oh my god, it was the best. I love Craig Gas. What was your favorite part? All of it. Oh, hey. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about why my career sucks today? <laughs> Sorry to beat Yoda doing Elvis, but uh, walking. Every comedian that comes here rips us just a little bit, but not like he does. It was really, really funny. And English is not my language. And, and, and it's like all the jokes that he, he did was like outstanding, really outstanding. He's a great storyteller. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. A good storyteller. totally. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that great show. It's awesome. Show. Yeah, we'll come back him. again? Absolutely. Oh, we'll you think back. he's going to come back? He better come back. This is Davis of Milton. <laughs> come on. Great show. It's awesome. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> like, yeah, that's. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> Not Thank a you. problem. I'll Thank see you guys sometime soon. Hopefully, I'll be able to come back in before oh, yeah. I leave. So, we should great. hope. Hell yeah, come back. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I love this place. So, yeah. Thank Real's you. Badass. Well, nice you, have, to meet you, you. Have, you have my hours and everything. So when you yes. come back, you know, request for me again. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank right? you. I'll have see you soon. Night. All right. Cool. If I'm laughing, you know, and you're looking back there and seeing me laugh, then. I think you should laugh too. <laughs>